this world, there is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. In Florida, the Dunham family moves into a home that seems ideal. But they soon find themselves under attack. An unseen enemy tries to drive them out, forcing them to fight a war against the world of the dead. Ah! Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. In central Florida, halfway between Orlando and Daytona Beach, lies the town of Deltona. Legend claims explorers came here searching for a fountain of everlasting life, but some found only hardship and death. The swamps have long since disposed of their bodies, yet many say their ghosts still haunt the living. The Dunham family arrives in Deltona in June 2001, looking for a larger home to fit their growing family. Is this the right place? Ed earns a living renovating houses after retiring from a career as a U.S. Army Ranger. A uh, gentleman that I did some work for him, he had a bunch of property. He knew that we were looking for a different place. He's like, here's a set of keys, bring your wife out here, and let her take a look at it, and you know, look around. That's really something, what do you think? Beth has taken time off from her work to raise their daughter, Emily. I was really excited when we pulled up and saw this nice house in a nice neighborhood. This was a house with its own yard, and it was gonna be enough for everybody to, you know, have their own space. Matt! 12-year-old Matt is Ed's son from a previous marriage. He stays with Ed and Beth on weekends. It was awesome. It was just picture perfect. I liked it all. When's he gonna move his stuff? He said he didn't want it anymore. So we could use what we wanted and put the rest in the garage. That's weird. Ed and Beth find it puzzling that the owner hasn't yeah, moved his belongings. Check out the bedrooms. Huh? See, there's one you like. Stop. Okay, Ed, there's a half-eaten food plate. Come on, just throw it away. That's no. gross. Not that much. Leftover food on the counter, old milk in the refrigerator. He got up and left, and he just didn't make any sense. Okay, that, that's disgusting. He said he was gonna pay us to box everything up. I guess he meant clean it up, too. What do you think? Huh, should we take it? It is a good deal, especially if we can rent to own. Yeah. I'm not gonna get anything else for this price, so, yeah. What about you, champ? It's awesome. You come here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's settled then. We were so excited about getting this house. We were like, okay. We jumped right on it. We just went for it. Within days, the Dunhams have settled comfortably into their new house. It was really cool. Everybody was happy. Everything was very quiet when we were all comfortable and relaxed.
I felt like somebody was watching me. Someone's watching me. What are you talking about? I just feel like somebody's out there. There's somebody out there? Seems like it. Did you see something? Did you hear something? I hear a little something. Like what? Just a small noise. I. No. Hey, come on. It's nothing, all right? Yeah. Look, hey, tomorrow I'll put up some blocks, all right? Okay, great. Thanks. A few nights later. I was in a deep sleep when I smelled smoke. Honey, honey, get up. Get up. I think I smell fire. Get Emily. Go get Emily. There's a guy in here. Is, is there a fire? I don't know. I'm either losing my mind or there was something there. Well, what exactly did you smell? It, it was cigar smoke. There was a guy sitting on the bed. And she goes, it, it's gone. There's no now. guy there now. So there is no fire. And I'm like, there's a guy here. I swear to God, there was a guy here. I believe you. I just told him that. I'm going to go to bed now because uh, there's no fire, and you can figure out what was going on. Well, that's good news, right? Well, how can we afford another child when we can barely make ends meet as it is? We'll manage. Yeah. The responsibility hit first, and then, you know, oh, okay. This is a good thing, though. This is a good thing. What do you think? It was an unexpected pregnancy, but a welcome. So, we were very excited about it. As Beth's pregnancy progresses, she begins taking naps whenever Emily sleeps.
way. Please. I think someone's in the house. in the doorway. Ed finds Beth and Emily safe, but shaken. And she just stood there staring. And then when I called you, she disappeared. Hey. You all right? I think so. Well, what did she look like? Older. She, 60s, 70s. <laughs> this she woman, she described, hair. fit my she mother's description to a T before she had the cancer. Sounds like my mother. Your parents always say, when I die, I'm going to come back and I'll be watching over you. What if it was her? I was kind of thrilled by the idea that my mother might have made a visit. But then why is she scaring your pregnant wife half to death? I mean, that's not protective. You're right. Beth finds her ghostly encounter so unnerving that she begins avoiding her own home. I started taking a lot more walks with Emily. We spent as much time out of the house as we could. like straight out of the scenes from movies. That made me run out of the house. Ed is surprised to find his wife and daughter waiting outside. Honey, what, what are you doing? It's still happening, Ed. It's still happening. We walked in the kitchen, all the cabinet doors were wide open. I don't think they could have done that by themselves. And then I heard the shower going full blast, so I thought maybe it was you. And so I went down there to look. No, nobody was there. Nobody. I'm so scared, Ed. Now, I know she was feeling uneasy staying in the house by herself. Please. It was really frustrating because I couldn't do anything.
Get out. Get out and leave us alone! If you want to mess with somebody, mess with me, not with my pregnant wife! I think if I get loud, it'll make it go away. I, I swear to you, all right? I will make our house safe, okay? All right. That night, Ed and Beth argue about how to deal with the ghosts. They haven't done anything harmful. You don't think they're dangerous? They're just messing with you. Well, I still don't like it. Well, what, you want to give up the house? No, I love the house. I just don't love them. I'll fix it. How? I don't know. I'll find a way. In the meantime, just lighten up. Okay, lots of people live with ghosts. Okay. It's okay. It's all right. I had chills up and down my spine. It's probably just the pipes. Scared the hell out of me. A few days later, Ed's son Matt returns for the weekend. Get in? What's up, buddy? You called me? No, I didn't call you. What's going on, buddy? What are you hearing? Huh? Is something wrong? Matt, what's going on? Uh, nothing. He didn't hear anything. Matt, what did you hear? Nothing. But he said... No. You could feel the tension. I'm gonna go outside. You knew it was there but you didn't know what it was about. Look, I don't want the children involved. Let's leave them out of it, all right? Well, maybe he shouldn't come over here until whatever this thing is is out. You okay? Yeah, um, I'm just getting some fresh air. It's all the stress around me. It's fine. was starting to really, you know, take a toll. The whole overtone of the house was dread almost. You know, for the longer we lived there, the greater the tension became. For the Marines, any contact with the terrorists was an opportunity to gather intelligence. The gunman who accepted the phone was indeed South I was just so freaked out. You 
could hear somebody being dragged. I started to panic because I was concerned for her. What do we do? Who do we turn to? when I got online and tried to find answers. Ed posts a plea for help on a website. receives a reply from Dusty Smith, founder of the Daytona Beach Paranormal Research Group. Dusty Smith, may I help you? That's Ed. Ed Dunham? Hi. Yeah, thanks for your offer. Why don't you start by telling me a little bit more about when you saw the ghost? We talked on the phone I just saw for a good while. Uh, did he say anything? She wasn't being judgmental. She was very cool. He kept saying over and over, she I'm not crazy, this is really going on. It's been my experience over the well, years great. that when somebody when? tells you that, then you've got a solid haunting. If you don't mind, Dusty like arranges a time for her research team to visit the Dunham's house to conduct an investigation. We'll see you then. Thanks. Two nights later, Dusty and her team arrive. They bring equipment to measure and record possible paranormal activity. We're gonna go inside, meet the family. We'll get to work, okay? Hi, I'm Dusty Smith. Hi, I'm Ed. This is my wife, Beth. Hi, Beth. Hi, so, uh... I guess the sooner you get started, the sooner we can get rid of those ghosts, huh? Yeah, well, well it could take a little time. I just need Most to clients think research. you're going to walk How in and well, every case is different, take a magic wand and wave it around the area and everything's going to be fine and dandy. And unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Before you saw the female apparition. Well, I Dusty interviews Ed and Beth as her team sets up its equipment. The researchers record the baseline temperature in each room so they can identify sudden changes. They also record EMF readings. 
Dusty theorizes that fluctuations in electromagnetic fields can be caused by paranormal activity. I started noticing more noises and activity since I found out I was pregnant. I mean, I don't know if it's, it's stress or if it's just nerves or, or if it's even related, but... About a third of the way through the initial interview, we heard a banging on the wall. The temperature's dropping a little bit. And we were like, okay, what's going on here? Ed, what's on the other side of that wall? A garage. Just take your time, try not to miss The anything. researchers use an infrared thermometer to read instant temperature changes. Strong in this particular area. Continue taking readings. Okay, Are you getting any readings here? No, I'm not getting any reading at all. You want to check? Can you hold this, please? Sure. It ain't the hot water heater. I checked it a bunch of times. Good, but right now we have to document everything. Saw the ghost here. Okay. The researchers investigate the areas where Ed and Beth report seeing apparitions. I smelled smoke and I worked my way down the hallway. Something over in here, there was the first ghost was here. And I was standing right here, and then he was just seated there on the bed. Can you show me exactly where it was? Yeah. Yanked my head backwards to where it, it literally ah. hurt my neck. All right. Yeah, something just... It was very distinct, very firm, very, I am here, and I want you to know it. Hey, guys, leave her alone! Hey, Ed, Ed, be careful what you say in this house. Don't yell or act aggressive when something happens. It, it may be your first instinct, but it could be making it worse. Okay, um... I am detecting a, a lot of activity here, so let's set up an audio recorder here on this table and a video camera down the hall. What are the recorders for? EVPs. It's electronic voice phenomena. Spirit voices are sometimes captured by recorders when we can't hear them with the naked ear. For the next few hours, the researchers continue to document temperature fluctuations in EMF readings. Dusty leaves with a wealth of raw data to analyze. Our rule of thumb, we have to have three pieces of evidence that back one another up. And then we can say, okay, that was a paranormal experience. We'll figure this out. I was truly hoping that she could make it, poof, go away. The next day, Dusty picks up property records from the county courthouse. Hi, I'm Dusty Smith. I hey. called about the house in Deltona. Oh, okay. On Mason Drive? Okay, okay. great. Hey, it's, uh, sure. Okay. Thank you. She discovers the Dunham's house has been sold several times, often for much less than nearby properties. She learns that local Native Americans once considered areas around Deltona sacred land. Dusty believes two previous owners, a man and an elderly woman, died inside the house. It gave me hope that we were actually finding a reason for the level of activity that was going on in the house.
Dusty is alarmed to hear so many voices on the tape. We may be up against something that we weren't ready to handle. The recording from the Dunham's home contains more than a dozen possible spirit voices. Dusty realizes she cannot handle this alone. Her research leads her to a psychic medium in Pennsylvania named Kelly Weaver. Kelly is intrigued by Dusty's message. There was just something about it, please help, that caught my eye and, and I really wanted to see what I could do. Kelly asks Dusty to send photos of the house without any people or paranormal activity in them. I don't like to know anything. Just send me the photo you know, and let me see what I get. probably died in this room, and then the man would have died down the hall. But at least we're starting to get some answers. I was hoping on that we could make it go away. It doesn't make me feel any better. What if this is not a friendly spirit or a bunch of friendly spirits? It could help us figure out how to get rid of them. You know, I just need to do what We were hopeful that we were going to come up with an answer for the reason of the haunting. In Pennsylvania, Kelly receives the photos Dusty sent her. Every time I tried to touch them, I got a headache. It's very unusual for me to get a headache or a bad feeling from a photograph. That's what really um, set these photos apart. It just was really strange. I was dreading doing the reading. I dreaded it. A few weeks later, Ed arrives home one night to find his wife and young daughter waiting for him outside. I just felt really uneasy about the whole house now. I was not going anywhere in the house by myself anymore. Yeah, well, I feel much safer out here than I do in there. Well, look, that is your house. You have a right to live in your house. I want her to be happy. I want her to be able to stay in the house during the day. You don't have to deal with it all day. I wanted us back normal again. Maybe we should move. I don't want to have another baby here. Our talks started getting more serious about should we leave? We can't afford it. Well, maybe we shouldn't worry about money so much all the time. As we start fighting over money, and we were fighting, you know, just to fight because we were irritated with the situation. We can't stay here. We don't have it. Emily was not holding up very well. You could tell, though, she, she wasn't getting any sleep. It interfered in every aspect now of our life. I was really turning nasty. Ed hopes that by now, Dusty has found a solution. I just want to make a phone call! Every little thing would set him off. I just got to the point where I didn't even want to be bothered anymore. I just wanted to be left alone. Dusty. Ed. Look. We can't take this anymore, all right? Um, we need you to come over here tonight and tell us what our options are. Right? We need these ghosts out of here now. Where are you? Where are you? I heard you. 
at you. ex-army ranger basically dictated his personality. He literally took the stance of, this is my ground, you are not going to take it from me or my family. Okay. It was, okay. It was just the there on the roof is this figure, this, 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 I don't even know what it was. It was a dark figure standing on the roof, but it was definitely there. In the image, Dusty sees orbs that she believes may be spirits drawn to Ed. Unfortunately, they're very attracted to him because they know he can see them. I, I believe you. You go inside, I'll turn off my car, I'm right behind you, okay? Let's figure this out. Um, we could try to get a priest out to bless the house. We don't belong to a church. Then a priest probably wouldn't come anytime soon. Well, that's not gonna work. What else have you got? He was getting louder, more challenging to everyone, including myself. Well, we could try to do a cleansing ourselves. We could combine our usual techniques with some Native American techniques because of their history in this area. Sounds great. Can you do it as soon as possible? Right, Beth? Um, you gotta give me a couple days. There's another thing. Emily hasn't been sleeping, and I don't know why. She's getting tired, more tired and more tired, and every little thing was setting her off. So I couldn't figure out why she wouldn't be sleeping. Could you use one of your video cameras to find out? Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, thanks. All right, good. Let's go. So what we'll do is we'll set up a video recorder, a sound recorder in this room, and it'll record everything that happens in Emily's room when you can't be... Wedding, I'm so mad. Now it's it's focusing on Emily. Where are you? Huh? What are you hiding? Where are you? Huh? You think you're in hell now? You think you're in hell now? Wait till I get done with you. Leave my daughter alone. Leave my wife alone. So we'll have Emily's whole night's sleep on video. Ed and Beth move Emily's crib to their bedroom, where they feel she will be safe. I feel better just knowing that Emily's in the room with us. Thanks, Dusty. I'm sorry about the way I behaved earlier. I just, I just feel like I, I can't do anything to protect my family. I understand. You and Beth have been through a lot. I'll be back for the cleansing. I was so emotionally attached to this family that it hurt to see them falling apart. It hurt to see Ed being as aggressive as he was and Beth not understanding why. It ripped my heart out. It got very painful. A few nights later, 
Dusty returns with her researchers to perform a cleansing ritual. Dusty's team uses holy water and a Christian prayer, along with a Native American tradition of burning sage. Good, that's right, get it into the corners. The smell of the sage is supposed to make spirits uh, leave. While you're doing that, you can say nothing negative is allowed to stay in this space. Only good and positive energy can remain in this space. Nothing negative can stay in this space. Only good and positive energy can stay in this space. Nothing negative can stay in this space. Only good and positive. Beth helps the group cleanse the entire house. Beth, I'll give you this card. It's a prayer to St. Michael. It may make you feel better if you're ever uncomfortable in the house. Okay. After everything was over, I felt a calm. I felt like they're coming out and trying was uh, really helpful. I'd better switch out the videotape. Mm -hmm. In your room? Oh, sure. She's finally sleeping. Wow. Good. Go ahead. I'll try not to wake her. Okay. Okay. My hope at that point was we did it. We, we helped this family. They've taken the high ground. They won their house back. The next day, Dusty reviews the surveillance tape. Dusty continues to study the surveillance video of Emily's crib. Nine hundred miles away, psychic medium Kelly Weaver prepares to read Dusty's photos. May my guardian spirits and angels guide me as I read. Keep me safe. I heard a voice that was neither male nor female. It called out Emily's name. It seemed to pulsate in my hand. It felt like there was just a portal of energy waiting to explode. If there was so much negative energy in this house, the roof would just blow off. This is something more evil. This is a darkness. Dusty fears Emily is in imminent danger. told her I, I really like, had bad feelings of what was happening. I also sense an evil non-human entity. The only thing I could think of was 
Please don't let something else happen. I'm on my way over there now. Dusty believes that an entity is threatening their daughter. Why would anything want to hurt her? I was physically sick. Okay. So, okay, we're getting out of here. We're getting out of here. Get the bags. We're going to stay with my parents. I'm not raising another child in this house. Just go. Just go. Okay, here, you take the baby. I'll get the suitcase. Just take the baby, all right? Go. Just go. 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 We escaped literally. Barely. The Dunhams find a new home in a neighboring town. See the baby. And Beth gives birth to a healthy baby boy. I just love you. Who's that? Huh? Who's the that? Dunhams are relieved that Emily has no memory of what she endured. See baby. Look at the baby. Because I kept thinking that she's not going to be able to recover from this. You know, she's gonna be damaged her whole life. But Emily is a totally functional, normal child. We're a very strong family now. Ed finally accepts that he cannot fight what he doesn't understand. Be protective, that's great. But listen to the people around you. I don't care how big or mean or tough you think you are, you're not gonna win. Young brothers venture into the woods and encounter a demonic entity. I didn't know what it was. A monster, maybe. No place is safe. Not even their home. I was terrified. I knew there was something in our room. It was looking at me. As child's play, turns into a real-life nightmare. It, it's out there! In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. Just out here. <laughs> 
Going deep. Hi, right, superstar. In the late 1960s, Sonny Yancey and his family live in Lake Worth in the largely undeveloped southern Florida woods. All right, on two. Hut, hut. Where he plans for a quiet life with his wife, Barbara, and two sons, 12-year-old Tom and 7-year-old Tim. Our house was pretty remote. It was at the end of this dirt road, out in the middle of nowhere. Pretty isolated. Barbara is a stay-at-home mother. My mother, as a child, I remember her as a big, silver, shiny, cherubic smile on her face all the time. Just great energy. Sonny is a carpenter and works in construction. He's also a Korean War vet who suffers from bouts of post-traumatic stress disorder. Go deep! You gotta run faster than that, son! My mom mentioned uh, quite a few times how he was changed by Korea. You gonna get it or what? Yeah. Part of him has never been able to shake the hold of the battlefield. In Korea, he was a sergeant in charge of a mortar platoon. He would tell stories every once in a while about how they would take bulldozers and dig big holes and push the bodies in it and cover them up. He never was like that the whole time. When I was really little, he was bouncing me on his knee and, you know, being a typical dad. All right, big third down play coming up. But that summer, Sonny's temper gets inexplicably worse as he grows increasingly dark. You know, I'm tired. I'm going into bed, take a nap. And then all of a sudden, man, he, he just got wicked. Hey, hon. And whatever is affecting him now seems to be coming from the woods. Lake Worth is a city in southern Florida settled in the late 1800s. Before that, its lush forests and waterways were a refuge for escaped slaves, as well as Native Americans fleeing the Seminole Wars. The woods are rumored to still hold secrets from the past, and an unexplained evil. My brother and I spent a lot of time in the woods. It was probably two, three square miles of uh, woods. We had paths that we would use to walk around through there. Spent a lot of time playing together. My dad built a fort out there. It was this amazing thing. <laughs> you got me. I'm going down to the lake to look for frogs. Want to come? Nah, I'll hold the fort. You're so funny, I forgot to laugh. Piff <laughs> squeak. I got the feeling that I was being watched. I knew it. I mean, everybody has that inner feeling to where you know something's not right. My mind ran away with me. I didn't know what it was. A monster, maybe, but I know it scared me to death. Tom tells no one about his experience in the woods.
But seven-year-old Tim continues to explore alone and unaware. There was something in the tree, but I couldn't see it with my eyes. I could just see the tree reacting to it being there. This thing made its way down the tree to the bottom branch, and it landed in the leaves. <gasps> Whatever it was, I didn't want to be near it. Mom! 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 I talked to my mom. I said that there was something out in the woods. Just calm down. Just tell me everything. Tell me what happened. I told her that something was out there, and I could hear it behind me in the grass. I could hear the twigs and branches breaking behind me. It's OK. It's OK, sweetie. Calm down. She summed it up as uh, just an animal that I had perhaps startled or something like that. The boys ignore their experiences and try to enjoy the summer. That's <laughs> good. Fearing any mention of the haunting could summon what they call the Shadow Ladies Man. And gentlemen, attention, if you will. Please note the wand I hold in my hand is solid wood. When we would see these shadows moving outside the house, they were very frightening. They were terrifying for me and Tom. And we didn't talk about it. One night, Tim is suddenly jarred awake from his sleep when he feels a presence. I looked over at our window. I saw a shadow go past the window. I got up, looked out the window, and there was nothing there. In the late 60s, brothers Tom and Tim Yancey are haunted by an evil force they call the Shadow Man in the Lake Worth, Florida woods where they live. I knew things weren't right. We knew that something was outside the house. We didn't know what it was. Late one night, seven-year-old Tim can feel it coming closer. I looked out through the window to see what it was, and beyond the yard, in the trees, you could see a dark figure. It's human-shaped. That was very frightening. Tim, what's going on in here? Tom, what'd you do to him? Me? Nothing. There's a man in a yard. 
I don't see anyone. <sighs> For crying out loud. Their father, Sonny, is a Korean war vet suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Ever since the entity began tormenting the boys, he's grown increasingly angry and volatile. That's just great. The Shadow Man disappears into the night for now. But just two weeks later, 12-year-old Tom begins acting strangely. One night, I open my eyes to see Tom standing in the middle of the room. Tom, what are you doing? And he walked out the door. It was almost like there was something drawing him out there. Tom, Tom, what are you doing? Tom, wake up. Wake up. It was very frightening for me because I knew that something was out there. I didn't understand what the interaction was, what was going on there. For weeks, Tom continues to sleepwalk often finding himself by the lake. It's a weird feeling to wake up and not know where you're at. To keep Tom from sleepwalking, Sonny and Barbara resort to drastic measures. Hey, guys. Don't stay up too late. My parents were getting frustrated. They were having to get up out of bed every night night after night. So they made the decision to stack chairs in front of the door. I'm not sure about this. Look, if I can't sleep, I can't work. I can't work, we don't eat, all right? I know, and we, we can't have him fall in the lake in the middle of the night either, but this is extreme. Listen, let's just try and see if this works. Maybe a sleepwalking will stop, okay? Hey, what if I have to go to the bathroom? Suck it up, soldier. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boys, knock it off in there. Lights out. That night, Tom sleepwalks once again. Tom, be quiet. You're gonna wake up Dad. No sign of frustration on his face. He would just stand there and work at that door uh, for a long time. the door open up by itself.
Tom turned, he walked into the closet, and the door shut behind him. I could hear a conversation going on in there. There were two voices in there. The boys are not alone. In the late 60s, an evil force they call the Shadow Man torments brothers Tim and Tom Yancey in the woods and in their home in Lake Worth, Florida, while they play and while they sleep. One night, it begins calling 12-year-old Tom outside. His father barricades the door to keep him safe. Tom wasn't able to get outside anymore. He wasn't able to go out into the woods in the middle of the night. Tom, you're gonna wake up, Dad. But the dark entity will stop at nothing. I think that whatever there was that was there that he was interacting with decided to come inside. definitely two voices talking. I could hear Tom and someone else inside that closet. I was terrified. I knew what was going on. I knew there was someone in our room. I remember seeing a black shadow figure in there with red eyes. But his mother doesn't believe him. Thomas Yancey, get out of the closet and back into bed. I've had enough of your nonsense. <laughs> it's going to make real trouble around here. She thought I was in there playing toys, messing around. I was scared for him, but there was nothing that I could do. My parents, they didn't believe us. Sweet dreams. While their parents grow increasingly frustrated, the dark shadow man shows no signs of letting up. Then one night, it finds a new way to terrorize the boys. I was laying in bed, and I felt something hit the mattress. And I reached over. It was a pebble, a small rock. Cut it out. More of them started falling. And it seemed like it was from a, a great height. And then it started bringing things into the house, things from the woods. I felt something land in my hair.
Jimmy. What is all this stuff in your bed? It would drop insects in our bed. Down? Big, Spooky. creepy Florida cockroaches. We didn't bring them in. There was no way for them to be inside with us. No windows open, anything like that. And they would be there. And that really confused my mother. Jimmy, what is all this? That's when my mom started to notice that something was going on. Desperate to help her children, Barbara gets angry and searches for answers anywhere she can find them. Who are you? She bought a spirit board. She brought it into the house, and she tried to communicate with it. What do you want? I think that she tried to do something to save her kids, to save herself, to save her family. But I don't think that she knew what to do. But little does the Yancey family know, Barbara has just unleashed the Shadow Man's fury. Good night, boys. Visit DestinationAmerica.com. In the summer of 1968, an evil entity is awakened in the woods outside Tim and Tom Yancey's home in Southern Florida. For months, it torments the brothers day and night. Their mother, Barbara, suspects there is paranormal activity in their home, but has no idea how to help her seven and 12-year-old sons. One night, the shadow man is too close for comfort. It was on the wall across the room. I was terrified. Mom! Mom! I remember the feeling of being there at the doorway to their room and knowing that I had to wake mom and dad up. Just the fear of how they were going to react, what they were going to say. Timmy, is that you? The man, he's on our wall, like a fly. His father reacts with fury. Now, you listen here, son. I'm going to tell you exactly what the problem is here. You ever heard of the boogeyman? Boogeyman? The boogeyman. Boogeyman does bad things to bad kids. If you're good, the boogeyman will go away. So you have to be good. Now get back to bed. That notion that I was a bad kid and that I was doing bad things and that something had come to punish me had affected me for the rest of my life. I didn't know what I had done to deserve this. I felt that I was a bad kid and that I was being punished for something. From that point on, the boys keep silent about their frightening experiences. It was easier not to talk about this stuff and kind of deal with it ourselves. You tough up. There were so many nights that you would lay there still 
covers over the head kind of mentality and and hope that whatever it was, that it wasn't coming after you that night. As the Shadow Man grows stronger, their father, Sonny, a Korean War veteran who suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder, grows angrier. He would be so frustrated because he didn't understand what was going on in our house. A lot of family dysfunction, a lot of chaotic environment, that those things seem to attract this negative energy into the home, and it's like a coupling that it attaches to a family or to a location, and it thrives off of the negative energy that's there. The brothers vow to stick together no matter what and have a new name for their tormentor, the Boogeyman. On Christmas Eve, the boys sneak downstairs to look at presents under the tree. We had gotten up and we had dared to venture into the living room. The banging started. It was back in my room. trapped dad's awake now and we're outside in the living room and we know he's going to blame that sound on us and we don't know what to do Boys, I warned you. You little... come on tell me this was an accident we didn't do it tell me this was an accident we didn't do it honest you start shaking so your friend from the closet comes down here on christmas eve and starts throwing things around where is he? Huh? Is he in the tree? Is he in the kitchen? Leave him alone. You want to stay up? You can stay up. Outside, follow me. Whatever this was had the ability of conscious choice. It was intelligent. It could get us in trouble. And it took great delight in doing that. You guys like to stay up all night? You can stay up all night. I'm gonna get a good night's sleep. Their father employs a scare tactic he learned while in the military. You stay out here with your ghost. You stand here all night. Without realizing it, Sonny Yancey delivers his children directly into the arms of the dark entity that haunts them. We stood there, and we stayed there. My brother worked very hard to talk to me, to tell me stories, to keep us calm. But being outside of the house, knowing that there's something in those woods, and I was terrified. For the past few months, an evil spirit they call the Shadow Man has been haunting seven-year-old Tim and 12-year-old Tom in and around their home in Lake Worth, Florida. That winter, it finds a new way to torment the Yancey brothers. Boys, I warned you! You little... 
provoking the wrath of their father, who suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder. So, you want to stay up? You can stay up. Outside! Follow me! The punishment? Stay outside all night in the woods. The woods where the brothers first encountered the Shadow Man. Stay out here with your ghost. You could hear it walking around. You could see a shadow moving through the trees. And we're out there, and we're with it. And it's me and my brother, two kids, in the middle of the night, standing out in the middle of the woods. It was very frightening. Ah! 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 It's, it's out there! Shh, Are you all right? Mom finally got Dad to come out and let us back in. All right, you guys can go back in now. My father grew more and more frustrated. The phenomenon that was going on was increasing, and he would blame the noises that were happening on us. His punishments were very severe. The goal of this monster, I think, was to create more negative energy, more chaos, more depression in us as kids, and a more chaotic environment in our house. The haunting of the Yancey home grows more dangerous. You know there's something there. Something's doing it. It's in the room. It's with you. And you've got to reach down there and pull those sheets up. It felt like somebody's fingernails raking across your rib cage. Ah! 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 I broke both of my collarbones. That's when things started getting physical. Ah! Tim, Tim. somebody your own size, huh? He's your brother. I didn't do it. I just ran straight into the wall. I swear. He just got up and ran straight into the wall. We have to get him to a hospital. <laughs> Months of terror have led up to this moment. An attack. but it would take another 30 years before the brothers would rid their house of the Shadow Man. From the time they were young boys, Tim and Tom Yancey were tormented by an evil entity that came out of the woods and into their home. They called the dark figure the Shadow Man. I'm gonna tell you exactly what the problem is here. Boogeyman does bad things to bad kids.
And when Tim was just a boy, it attacked him. Something, it felt like somebody's fingernails. It was very frightening. Ah! Ah! I panicked. I jumped up out of bed, screaming, just blindly trying to get away from whatever it was that was attacking me. Tim, Tim. I had no ideas that ghosts could actually harm you. Things never got any better for us. As soon as my brother was old enough, he left the house. He had had enough, and I didn't see him again for years. He was gone. It is now 2009. It's been nearly 30 years since Tim and Tom lived in the house. Their parents, Sonny and Barbara, have since passed away. Tom went on to play football for Florida State University and later became a firefighter and assistant fire chief. Tim and I just kind of grew apart. And it killed me. I mean, all, all I wanted was my, my brother back, you know? Tim eventually became a paranormal investigator. If there's any way to take something bad that happened in your life and to turn it into something positive, it's by taking the information that you've learned and using it to help others. But the brothers still have unfinished business. My brother and I reconnected again to figure out what we're going to do with this house. It was quite a while since I'd been to that home. It had a sickening feel to it. It was pretty sickening. It was just evil. It was just an evil feeling. So, what are we going to do with this place? Me Tim and tells Tom he and his wife, Trish, want to reclaim the house. What are you, nuts? I was very surprised that Tim wanted to move into the house simply because of the things that happened. I felt like he wanted to stop the paranormal activity completely. And I think that's why he bought the house, to put a stop to it, to end it. We made a decision that we weren't going to be afraid anymore. We were going to take back that house. Tim reaches out to his friend Roy Hall, a violent haunting expert, to help him perform a cleansing ritual in the home. Roy believes the demonic entity from the woods haunted the Yancey family because Tim's father was abusive. Boys, I warned you. Tell me this was an accident. Where is he? Is he in the tree? Is he in the kitchen? Tim's house had a lot of dysfunction in it. And that's the thing that something like that feeds upon. Tim Yassi's and, and Tom's father, having served over in the Korean War, I'm sure he's seen a lot of bad things. Feel that? I've never stopped feeling that. This thing that entered the home could have definitely magnified that and keyed on that to try and make him worse than what he really was. Where's the room? Upstairs. St. Michael, New York. Angel. The negative energy is strongest in Tim and Tom's old bedroom. Lord, please help cleanse this house of evil and negativity. Help us make it a place of light and love. A home fit for a family.
St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle against the world of darkness, against evil spirits. When we were done, you could feel that the energy was different in the home. There was a change in the air. We had displaced the negativity in the home. Is dinner almost ready? Almost. I'm checking now. Right. In August of 2009, Tim, Trish, and her son Gabriel move into the Lake Worth, Florida house. I don't think there is a day where we're going to be able to turn a page and say, oh, whew, that's done. Tom often drops by for a visit. Good job. It's not easy sometimes good job, good job. because you can feel an energy that underlies nice. the house, that underlies my husband. Oops, it's got a lineman in the family. Lunch is ready. All right, I'm starving. That was awesome. After I left home, I had no interest in paranormal or, or ghosts. But now that I'm becoming closer with my brother, I'm starting to understand what happened to me in my childhood. I live in a house today that is full of family, full of laughter, full of humor. It's a joyous place. So many times when Trish and I work with families who are going through a violent haunting, the key is mindset. If you heal the dysfunction in the family, you can heal the haunting. Love becomes the target of a deadly spirit. Uh, it was five marks, like somebody had really dug in and scraped down. Determined to keep him in its clutches. This entity was attached to Charles. She was very jealous, very possessive, and very angry. <laughs> He searches his family's tragic past for clues. My grandfather mentioned something like brujeria, which is like Spanish for witchcraft. Now, he must destroy the evil before it destroys him. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns between the worlds we see Someone's in my room. and the things we fear. There are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. Just north of the trendy and fast-paced city of Miami, rests the tranquil seashore of Hollywood, Florida. It's definitely a place to be. It's so relaxing and you get away from everyday life and it's so awesome just walking by the beach. I, I love it. In 2010, Charles Gonzalez invites his new girlfriend, Hannah, a single mother of two, over for dinner. I met Hannah through a mutual friend of ours. Things were getting a little bit serious between us, so I didn't want her you know, to meet my mom. Ma, look who's here. Oh! <laughs> Is that Hello. You? Oh, beautiful. Oh, so nice to meet you. me? Thank you. Sit down, sit down. It's going to get cold. Gracias, mama. Ladies first. Thank you. My mom liked what she saw. She liked my mom. They got along pretty well, you know. It, it was... It was definitely a good day. Back in Bogota, we used to have these huge family dinners. And my mom would prepare this delicious feast. <laughs> I came from Bogota, Colombia. I was born there. It's always in my heart. You know, it's where I grew up. Well, tell me, what was it like? <laughs> uh, well, there were a lot of us. 
And we all lived in the same house, if you can believe that. I grew up with my mom, my grandfather, my grandma, my uncle, my aunt, cousins. Uh, it was a big family. Why? It's just a joke. Hey, stop playing around, you two. Grandpa's coming home soon. Sorry. Hola, how are you? Hola. Hola. ¿Cómo están? Bien, ¿cómo te fue el día? Estuvo un poco caliente. A little bit hot. But it was good. Muy buen día. My grandfather, he did major projects all over the city, building homes. I never saw him resting. He was the head of household. He was the backbone of the family. I mean, he was such a presence to respect. Déjame ayudarte. Gracias. De nada. So, how do I look? Good. Like his grandfather, Charles's uncle Alfonso also played a big role in his life. My father died at a very young age, so he was the one that really kind of helped me grow up and, and, and tell me what I needed to know. To me, he was like my dad. He raised me. I looked up to him. All you need is just a dad. Trust me, ladies love it. My uncle's a very sharp man. He had that swag to him. He was a ladies' man. He was very classy. And yeah, it, girls sure loved him. <laughs> that I remember. Ay, ay, ay. Don't wait up. It's a shame we had to leave. Well, have you ever gone back? No. I miss the family, too. I think about the Alfonso Abuelo every day. In 1990, Charles's family suffered a series of tragedies, including the deaths of his uncle and grandfather. It's the year that I wouldn't wish to my worst enemy. My uncle was assassinated. He was murdered. Nobody really found out why, who did it. Then I had my grandfather pass away after that. My grandfather was the healthiest man you could find. He was not sick at all. <laughs> he just passed away. Just like that, just that quick. Soon after, Charles and his mother moved to the United States in hopes of leaving the past behind. I don't cry, mommy. They're still here with us. Just because we cannot see them, they're still making sure we're okay. So I thought that went well? Yeah, I had a really great time tonight. <laughs> Your mom is so sweet. I knew you guys would hit it off. You know, I really loved hearing about your family in Bogota. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's just so sad hearing about all those deaths happening at the same time. It's like your family's, I don't know, cursed or something. <clears throat> I 
Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. I'd better get out of here. Told the babysitter I'd be home by 10. Okay. But I'll see you this weekend. Good night. Despite the years that have passed, childhood memories continue to haunt Charles. After my uncle died, I started seeing some pretty weird things in the house. I just kept hearing noises, something loud, bang, boom. Like, trying to get my attention. Right after his beloved uncle Alfonso was murdered in Bogota, Colombia, Charles Gonzalez began witnessing supernatural events. Flies were making some kind of shape, looking like a shadow almost, like a person. I couldn't believe it. I was like, it's not happening. After my uncle passed away, I was a little bit creeped out. People were saying around town that there was a curse on, put on him. No. 20 years later, as an adult living in Hollywood, Florida, the past has mysteriously come back to haunt Charles. I just heard a loud noise, like when somebody hits something really hard. And I, I just remember just jumping out of bed, and I was like, whoa. hearing like footsteps coming slowly towards me. Who's in there? <laughs> that night, that's when I knew, okay, I'm not alone. There's definitely something here with me. For the first time in years, Charles has had a paranormal encounter. He contacts his good friend Pedro Rivera, who recently began working with the Paranormal Consulting Agency. 
Pedro was involved with a paranormal group. And I was like, he's going to know somebody that can help me. Hey, man. Pedro. Hey, man. What's, What's up? going Pasta? on? You want to break up or something? What? No. No, no, it's not that. No, we're doing great. Charles is a good friend of mine. I've known Charles since middle school. So what's up, then? I had an encounter last night. It's something I hadn't felt since Michael's funeral in Colombia. About a year ago is when Charles shared some stories about his childhood. You mean it was supernatural? And we have long conversations about ghosts and apparitions and poltergeists and all that. I just, I don't know what's going on, man, after all these years. You know, there's got to be a reason, right? There's got to be a reason. Whatever it was, it got my attention. I felt like if it was a spirit, it was maybe trying to watch out for me, perhaps. Don't worry, all right? We'll figure something out. Pedro asks the psychic medium on his paranormal team for help. She requests minimal information, just Charles's first name. Being a physical medium, I usually can feel a, a spirit. Telepathically, they speak to me. There was a small Spanish man. He had a bandana or like a handkerchief around his neck and was in like work clothes. He was saying to me, something's buried, something's buried. And he was just very adamant about it. This is about whatever was buried. an encounter with an eerie presence. Who's in there? Even though I was alone, I felt something like the chills would go through my body. And the last time I ever experienced that was back in Colombia, right after my uncle passed away. Um, I didn't know if it was paranormal. I didn't know what to call it. I just knew that it wasn't right. I knew it wasn't something that was supposed to be happening. I was really worried, and I needed to get something done and, and done ASAP. Charles Gonzalez seeks help from a paranormal investigative team. One of the members, a psychic medium, receives a message from a mysterious spirit. It can be very confusing as far as when a spirit trying to tell you something, because the message isn't always exactly clear. All I knew that it was, it was a warning.
That's psychic. She described my grandfather to a T. She described this man exactly as my grandfather would look. It's a strong, short man, gray hair, rough hands, like he's been working. The way he was dressed, color handkerchief that, that he's wearing, that's my grandfather. What else did she say? She thinks he wanted to relay some kind of warning, that he's trying to protect you somehow. She kept saying it had to do with something that was buried. Do you have any idea what he's talking about? Suddenly, Charles recalls something from his childhood. A clay figure. An object he found after his uncle Alfonso was murdered. Charles, what are you doing? Ma said to help out. You're always playing around. So? What's the problem with that? Charles, find something to do. <sighs> do you always have to push me around? I'm just trying to have fun. Jeez. Wow. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No. this thing out of the dirt and it was made out of clay and just looked like a like a person it had a face and everything and carved in it are his uncle alfonso's initials where did you get this it was in there. It was buried in the planter. It was just kind of weird that this thing would be buried in so deep and in, in a pot full of dirt. Why would it have my uncle's initials in it? Clean up this mess now. Father mentioned something like Santeria or Brujeria, which is like Spanish for witchcraft. What is that thing? I want you to stay outside. Why? What's wrong? Go! Charles's grandfather heads for the family prayer room. It was common, you know, for family to have their prayer room. If anyone of our family passed away, they would pray for the souls to make sure that they were, you know, doing okay wherever they were. Somebody went in there and just started smashing everything, glass everywhere. Those crucifixes were upside down. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> there was a picture of my uncle. Charles Gonzalez has been haunted by something evil, and his past may hold the answers.
After the murder of his uncle in Bogota, Colombia, Charles, then just a boy, unearthed a mysterious clay object outside his home, bearing his uncle's initials. Only to then discover the family prayer room destroyed. and his uncle's photo defaced. It's like a bunch of needles going through his face. This is very disturbing. My grandfather, he was pretty, pretty shaken. He fell to the floor and he started crying. No, it was me, no. I had never seen him cry before. <laughs> the clay object appears to be the source of what happened in the past. My grandfather believed it was created by black magic. And it has something to do with my uncle's death. Wow, that's intense. With the shrine and the upside down crosses and all that, it had to do with something evil. Did they ever find out who did it? No. My mom kept me away from all that stuff. So I never really knew what was going on. Then about a year later, we moved. What happened to the clay object? I don't know. My grandfather probably destroyed it. It's so weird. Why would he be trying to warn me about it after all these years? My grandfather is trying to tell me that, you know, be careful, you're being protected, but there's something going on. Maybe I should pay attention. There's more to his uncle's story. One afternoon, Charles meets up with his girlfriend, Hannah, but he can't stop thinking about the past. There was definitely a feeling in the air that it wasn't, something just wasn't 100% right. I was very kind of on edge. My girlfriend noticed it too, you know, she's like, you know, you're not really being yourself. I feel like we haven't hung out in a while. Seems stressed. You know you can tell me anything. If something's wrong, I want to help. There's nothing wrong. Actually, I'm just happy that you're here with me. I just wish you didn't have to go home. Well, kids are staying at my mom's tonight, so I'm all yours. Are you? I was like, oh, go away, it's not a big deal. Everything's fine.
it felt like, like somebody had walked through, like somebody had been there. It made my, the hairs all over my body stand on one end. Gonzalez has just been attacked. I felt just this intense burning sensation in my leg. Ah. How did that happen? It was five marks, like somebody had really dug in and scraped down. Do you have any bandages? Grab some peroxide. <sighs> Hannah? What's wrong? She lifts up her wrist and shows me, and there is the same scratch that I had in my leg on her wrist. Charles's worst fear is confirmed. Some kind of evil spirit is after him, and now his girlfriend. She was upset. She was shaken up. What is going on, Charles? I need you to tell me the truth. You remember that night you met my mom? Right? The, the, the story? Uh, about the curse? Uh, I don't know if it's something something supernatural or... or... <laughs> Or what's going on? I don't know. If this can attack me, what about my kids? I can't let anything happen to them. The news is too much for his girlfriend to handle. She had never had to deal with any situation like that in her life before. I'm sorry. Hannah. Ultimately, the couple parts ways. It was hard for me to let her go, but I felt that it was better not to have her than to bear with the pain of, God forbid, something happening to her. I wasn't going to be able to live with myself if that happened. I need help. I need someone to come and tell me what's happening because this isn't right. Once again, Charles turns to his friend, Pedro. Once it starts to get physical, it's when you have to react. Now there's action to be taken. He immediately calls upon his fellow team members, psychic medium Desiree Page and lead investigator Rich Valdez. Have you ever been involved in the occult in any way? What do you mean, like, like witchcraft? No. Never. What about that clay object you found back in Colombia? You told me it was buried. And in Desiree's vision, your grandfather was trying to warn you about something buried, right? Remember? It even had something that looked like your uncle's initials on it. Yeah, but what does that have to do with me? Someone placed a curse on that object with the intent to hurt your uncle. And now, whatever negative entity that was attached to the object, is after you. Whatever was going on in Charles's life at the time was probably correlated with the object that he had unburied as a child. Maldito! The transference of energy, especially when it comes to a curse, has no time. It can happen Immediately, it can happen a few weeks, a few days, a few years. What may have triggered it finally with Charles is he finally reached that point of complete happiness. And that is when this negative spirit actually started manifesting. And before you knew it, his life was in shambles. Still, Charles doesn't know why anyone would place a curse on his uncle. 
I don't understand. Why would someone want to hurt him? Did he have any enemies? No. Everyone loved Tio Alfonso. A scorned lover, perhaps? That's when it automatically sparked. The light bulb went off. It was her. anyone was still up. Oh, uh, remember Elena? The pleasure. I know who she is. And she's not welcome in this home. There was talk in the town that she could have been possibly a witch and that she could have been practicing witchcraft. My grandfather did not like her. He did not like her at all. He was pretty angry and told her, you have to leave. Don't come by here. You're not welcome here or even close to, to any of us in the family. Come on, papi. You can be serious. She's got you under some kind of spell, and I won't allow it. Do you understand me? I won't allow you to ruin my family. I remember him telling my uncle, you either pick her or you pick us. It's probably the best that you go. We can work this out later. You coward! You told me you loved me! Lies. And you? You think you're better than me? <laughs> you have no idea what I'm capable of, old man. This isn't the last you've seen of me. woman invoked a curse in order to exact revenge. You think it's so easy to get rid of me? I'll never let you free. Just know this, mi amor. You and your family will pay dearly. Okay, so now what? Huh? We have to break the curse or the entity will continue to haunt you. I felt just like a negative energy. Visit TLC.com. As a young boy in Colombia, Charles Gonzalez discovered a clay object etched with his uncle's initials. Charles suspects it was created by his uncle's scorned lover, who placed a curse on him and his family. Maldito! She wanted to hurt him. She wanted to damage him. She wanted to hurt the family. And we all felt it. It's now years later. A psychic medium senses that the entity attached to the object has set its sights on its next victim, Charles. Are you okay? It looked like a woman. She was very jealous, um, very possessive, and very angry. This entity was attached to Charles. The entity. It's, it's female by nature, and she wants you all to herself. She's the reason why you and your girlfriend broke up. 
We have to move now. The future depends on it. In order to break the entity's attachment to Charles and end the curse, the team brings in their occult expert, Angel Garcia. It appears that she was practicing brujeria, which is similar to santeria, and she was creating objects and doing things just to control. Do you have the replica? Yeah. Because Charles does not have the original clay object, he was instructed to recreate it. We needed to have something he can hold, something he can see. It's time. Please, step forward. Angel begins a ritual to end the curse by pouring a salt ring around Charles. Salt has always been known through the years to be protective against anything occult, dark, scary. The ring of salt is a protective circle. It's the last thing you need is somebody to pick this up and now carry this burden of, I have the curse with me. So people needed to feel protected. They needed to feel that they were in a sacred space. It was important for all of us to be there during the ritual because we needed everyone's energy. We were all just very on edge and very much wanting to help him and, and get rid of this for him. This isn't something that one person could have handled by themselves. The entity didn't show me itself that night but I could still feel that it was with Charles. It was definitely still there. Santum uh, I stood in the middle of that circle, and I prayed to my uncle and my grandfather to give me the strength to get rid of this thing, to send it away where it would not hurt anyone. I break the curse cast upon me. And my tío Alfonso Ferdinand Gonzalez and the future members of my familia. And I grabbed this figure and I crushed it in my hands and I threw it to the sea. and I felt the biggest weight come off immediately. The curse has been broken. You could feel the energy flow different, and it was all stemming from him. He broke this energy physically, feeling he was released. All he did was shift his energy to now, I'm in charge. I'm the one who's protected. I'm the one who destroyed this, and let this be. Ever since the ritual, Charles is confident he's free of the curse. Life is good today. Life is, life is awesome. And I feel like I'm back to myself again. I can be happy. Paranormal to me now is something so natural, so common. It's like oxygen and water. It, to me, it's very real. If anyone says that it's not real, it's because they're ignorant. Or they haven't been through it themselves. And I hope they, they don't go through it themselves. It's pretty disturbing. It's scary. I don't want to wish that upon nobody.